Are you ready to bring your 3D dreams to life and achieve greatness? Together, we'll master the concepts behind creating beautiful 3D motion graphics to finesse the perfect After Effects masterpiece. The journey ahead is short and exciting, so let's get started. All right, we'll be going through these three seamless examples that appear to animate forever, and you'll also be able to change the look of the graphic with ease. So let's lock things up and create these motion chains first. All we need to start off with is the rounded rectangle tool and just draw out what will be our first link. Disable the fill and set this to stroke only by setting the stroke to about uh, 30. Inside of the rectangle, you can increase the roundness to fully smooth out the shape like a nice bowling ball. Easy enough. The shape is ready, so make it a 3D layer and pop over to the renderer and use Advanced 3D. The next course of action is to, well of course, increase the extrusion depth to any value, but I'll set it to 100. Also, let's smooth out the shape by setting the bevel to convex and the bevel depth to 10. Alright, let's make this look really good by setting the specular shininess to 100% and of course make sure cast shadows are set to on. And to finish the style, create an environment light and this will provide us with those beautiful shadows. Well, at least you'll notice them shortly. At this time, you can also change the stroke color if you want to dial in a specific look. Now, we can begin the fun by adjusting the rotation values to angle this however you like. Then duplicate the link and set the Y rotation to 90 degrees and then position this upward to complete a chain. For an extreme pro tip, click Draft 3D and then the extended view so you can actually see what you're doing. Then you may duplicate these copies and make around six or so layers here. Also, you can customize the rotation and position values of each link so they're not all congruent. But when you're done, I would parent all the layers to the first original link. This will allow you to animate the position to slide the entire thing by. And to follow up, you can alt click the stopwatch for Y rotation and use the time asterisk 20 expression to rotate it all. If you have a lot to chain up, there's no stopping you from having another chain. And since we have an environment light, if you import an HDRI and set that light to the image, you can dramatically change the look of your graphics. Now, before we go off the chains with the next technique, see what I did there? If you want to master 3D, I have a full course on this topic. And to give you the best editing experience, be sure to get my free 200 template pack here for After Effects and Premiere Pro. With this, you can get access to over 40,000 assets to help you produce any project you're working on in no time. You can easily update templates to fit your needs and even animate entire projects within a few clicks. So when you need to save time, be sure to check the description below. All right, this next graphic is a 3D shape array. Though it's simple to create, we have to finesse After Effects to give us this goodie, which will hopefully yield some money from an excited client. So start off by drawing out a perfect circle with the ellipse tool. You can hold shift on your keyboard and do yourself a favor and center the anchor point. As before, make it 3D, set the extrusion depth to around 20, and then we'll use the same bevel settings and set the specular shininess to 100%. And of course, be sure to throw in the environment light as well. Now for the good stuff. Set the Y rotation to 90, then position our coin, essentially, in the direct center of the project. For the finesse part, adjust the Y anchor point to move this to the top of our project. So. When you duplicate the layer, you should be able to adjust the Z orientation by 30 degrees to accurately offset this. Then continue to duplicate and change each layer by an additional 30 degrees. Because the anchor point is centered, this allows us to rotate it just like this. So after some fast motion on my part, when you're ready to finish this off, create a null object, make it 3D, then parent all the layers to it. You can use this null to slightly adjust the Y rotation and be sure to animate the Z rotation to spin this by. And for another pro tip, you should always mess with the light's rotation values, animate them if you like, and don't forget to dial in the light intensity to give you the style that you need. Okay, we're on the last scene and one that has a lot of potential to create a variety of cinematic projects. A keyword that I pretty much abuse on this channel. Now, creating a sphere is different from other 3D objects. 
we also have to finesse After Effects to do it. So create a perfect circle with the ellipse tool. Then when ready, set the ellipse size to exactly two. Make it 3D, set the bevel style to convex and type 100 for the bevel depth. Boom, done, sphere. For the material options, I would set the shininess to 100%, but this time set the metal to 0%. It's important when you're working on 3D to mess around with both of these values and yes to the environment light like always. And I'm not kidding about adjusting the light's rotation because you can get some really cool looks when you do that. For this scene, it's all about duplicating the spheres and instead of scaling them, use the Z position to make them bigger or smaller. This will create depth. So just create a bunch of copies and move them anywhere in your scene. And when you're done, create a null object, parent all the layers to it, and finish the animation before it starts by keyframing the position of the null. And perfect, you have a full 3D scene in moments. And for another pro tip, you can add the wiggle expression to the position of the spheres to give you that extra movement. However, if we want to make this really cinematic, we cannot live without depth of field. So pre-compose everything, name it the Roman Empire. Straight away, add the 3D channel extract effect, and then you can use the black and white points to create a depth map, and then throw in the depth of field effect just increase the radius and when you're done with these settings duplicate this comp delete the effects and add the camera lens blur effect set the blur map to your bottom layer and select effects and mask adjust the blur radius responsibly subscribe and always be creating